here we are on B2S, the same day that we shot What Exactly Do We Mean By Daylight. Now, we're doing another daylight interior scene and we're looking about ways to spice it up. And one of the things that I was thinking of was introducing texture. Texture is just breaking up light. When you have solid, dull areas of your frame maybe, or you wanna just break up light and create a little bit of texture, we use these gobos and we create texture and make visual interest. Exactly, and if you don't know what gobos are, they're basically these things that you put inside spotlights. And we have a couple of options for gobos that really just make the lighting look more interesting. If you ever heard something like a branch of loris, this is exactly what we're talking about. And that's what we're gonna explore today. Exactly. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it, bro. So we got the crew back here setting up a couple lights, one hitting the kitchen in the foreground. We're gonna add some texture, see what that does. And then one in the background, kind of splashing against that back wall. The fixtures that we're using right now is one 600X as well as a 300X. Both of those have the spotlight mount on them. We're gonna put the gobos in the lights and see what kind of textures we can get. This is a gobo. Basically, it's a shape that you throw in front of a light that casts another shape on another surface. So there's a bunch of different patterns. There's a bunch of different textures. So in this scene, we have the opportunity to light from motivated windows that are off to the right. So we're gonna finish setting up some stuff and then we'll be right back with you. So a lot of doing this is really subjective. You can really do anything. The fun of this is you can kind of craft your image. You can create these shapes and these textures using these different gobos. What we went with is in the foreground, we have kind of a Venetian blind. It's basically creating textures on this back wall. And that's just our foreground. Now in the background, we chose kind of like a Kukaloris type of gobo. And what that does is it creates this nature vibe, like maybe there's a tree just outside that window. It's also pulling our subject out of the background. We don't want everything super bright. We want our focus to be in this like centered, framed Wes Anderson style shot. So do it to your taste. You might want to choose a different gobo for yourself. Maybe in the front, you don't want that even Venetian blind. Maybe you don't want to go with anything. I turned all the lights off and I even liked that too. What's cool is these gobos now come with customized shapes that you can make. You can go put your name on something and shine it up at a wall, maybe at a wedding or something. The creativity is up to you. Choose the kind of shape that you want, but I love the doors that this opens up for filmmakers. They're almost like having different lenses on your camera, except you have a lens on your light that changes up the character of that light. So I'm looking at our wide angle here and I'm really liking it. Although I am noticing that on this wall here, it's just a little too bright. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have them dim it down a little bit. That's the first thing. But I also want to like pull away some of these sharp edges. So I'm gonna have them defocus it as well on the spotlight mount. You can see as it goes from kind of this, this kind of sharp line, now it's all blurred out. It's more subtle, it's not as defined. Those We don't have those sharp edges. Kind of almost blending into the center of our frame, which is our focus point and our character right there in the middle. So um, I love the flexibility that these gives us. The gobos allow us to do that. And because we're in the spotlight mount, we can defocus. It's all about these tools that you have around your belt and just being able to pull those out. Again, this is all subjective. It just comes down to your taste, what you see. And you know, if you're inspired by the way the light's hitting the scene, then you're starting to develop your own style. And uh, that's really cool. I know as I'm maturing, into you know making more realistic natural looks or at least looks that I'm aiming for. This is something that I hope to continue learning. So the key here that I've been learning a little bit more and more is not to overlight it. Don't go too hard on it. Some might argue that this was already too much. Some might not, but this is that's the point. It's subjective. It's up to your decision, how you feel, how you like it. You look at the image and if you want to change it, change it. And the last little bit we have to do is just add some haze and then we are on and rocking. Let's get it, let's go guys. not everyone has access to all the gear in the world. Maybe you just have one light. Maybe, you know, you're just rocking one 300D or even a 120D. Right now we got a branch of Loris, an actual real branch that's hanging up on a C stand. And we're just shooting that light through and we're gonna see what it looks like compared to the actual gobo.
dude, the branch loris actually looks really good. I think it looks good. I think the branch loris, it's natural, so it actually looks the most natural. So yeah, it even looks better than the kukulora sometimes. Do you want to shoot it? Let's shoot it. Looking good. Oh. Dude, that looks pretty good. Great job, hey. guys. That's a wrap. Let's do it. Oh. All right, that, that was cool. I thought that turned out really cool. I like the way it looked. What do you think? Yeah, such a simple scene, yet there was so much mastery behind it because we added these techniques, we played around with all these options, and hopefully you got a lot out of just seeing exactly like, oh, like what one pattern does and what another pattern does. Even something as simple as a tree branch, you know, hopefully it motivates you to put this into your arsenal and just get really creative from there. Absolutely, sometimes it's just simple. We want to teach simple stuff and we had a simple scene and I thought it looked great. Exactly. Yes. We got one more thing to go, right? Yes, we got our comment question as always. And don't forget, put your comment questions down below, anything filmmaking related. But from Swiss Color, one thing I always wonder when looking at your tutorials, what color temperature is the camera set to? You use a 5600 Kelvin light source as well as 3200 Kelvin. So how do you decide what you set the camera to in order to get the right look? So that is a great question. Thank you guys for asking. And I don't think there's a right answer, right? With filmmaking, it's so open-ended. It depends. If you want a warm kind of look, raise your Kelvin higher. If you want the look to be cooler and you're looking on the monitor, there's a lot of warmth in here. I want to cool it off a little bit. Bring it down lower. It's mm -hmm. There's no right answer. I'm a rule breaker. The way I look at it is like you start off with, yes, 3200 Kelvin, 5600 Kelvin, depending on the lights that you have in your arsenal. You know, you may be working with more tungsten heads than LED heads, but it's all about kind of working with the lighting that you have available to you and the uh, color temperatures that they have because you want to achieve the the best skin tones possible. And the way that you do that is when you set your lights to complete white and then it's a marriage of like both your white balance in camera and white balance of your lights. So that's a great starting point. Obviously from there, you know, you can do anything from gelling them like blue or orange to get any sort of color or tone that you want. I totally agree. Let's get out of here. I'm yep. tired, but before we go, please subscribe. Here's our social links down below. Subscribe, comment, tell us what you think. How would you guys use Gobos? Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Let's get out of here. Yep. All right. Absolutely. See you guys. See you guys. Peace. I'm back on my grind again. Hey. Now let's let's alter that just a tiny bit. Oh, <laughs> I can do it. That was good.